Hey Fairmount kids, welcome to Elementary Bible School. Go ahead and grab your Bibles. You can go ahead and open up to the Old Testament to the book of Ezra, and we're going to start right in chapter 1. Um, but first, before we dive into today's lesson, I wanted to recap a little bit about what we've been studying. So we had learned that the nation of Judah had um, been disobeying God. They had been worshiping um, idols, and God warned them and warned them, but they would not stop. So he sent the nation of Babylon to to conquer them. And the nation of Babylon did. They came in, they destroyed Jerusalem. They took many of the people um, to, to Babylon with them. And there they were serving as slaves. Um, but God, through the prophet Jeremiah, sent word that this isn't going to be forever. After 70 years, you will um, you'll get to go back home. So Jeremiah brought that message of hope for the people. So um, that's what we're going to pick up today. We're going to pick up where the, um, the people of Judah are going to get, get to go back home. So God, just like he promised, he moves in the, the heart of King Cyrus, who is the king at this time, and he um, has moved him to the point that he's willing to let the people go back to Jerusalem. God was in control of everything that had happened to his people, and now um, a man named Zerubbabel is going to lead the people back to the nation of Judah and back to the city of Jerusalem. And that's what we're going to um, start reading about today. So grab your Bibles. We're going to open up to the Old Testament, to the book of Ezra. We're going to start right in verse 1. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also to put it in writing. So God has stirred King Cyrus to let his people return home. Let's continue reading um, in verse 2. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judea and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem. And may their God be with them. And in any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. So, God is completely taking care of his people. The people are going home. That's what this verse is saying. They're going to go home, but King Cyrus is going to let them rebuild their temple. And um, the temple was the house of worship in Jerusalem. And it also says he's going to have the people um, provide them with um, offerings and goods and gold to help pay for the rebuilding of the temple. So um, these treasures that they're going to be given are, are really going to um, help them as they are rebuilding. I'm going to continue reading in verse 5. Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Levites, everyone whose heart God had moved, prepared to go up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors assisted them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with valuable gifts in addition to all the free will offerings. God's people had been in a foreign land for 70 years. And now, just like God said, they're going home. Um, the Jewish leader Zerubbabel led the people out of Persia, and he's leading them back to Jerusalem. You can imagine that the, the people are going to be really excited to go home. Um, they hadn't been home in 70 years. The older people in the group probably remembered what it was like to be in Jerusalem, to be at home, and they were probably anxiously waiting to get back. And the younger people, um, they had never been there. They had only known the life as a slave in Babylon. So they were probably excited to go and see it for themselves and see what it was like. So the Bible tells us a little bit about what it was like when they're going back with Zerubbabel. So um, slip over to... Uh, Ezra chapter 2, we're going to be in verse 64. We're going to read 64 and 65. The whole company numbered 42,360, besides their 7,337 male and female slaves. So 
they're they have 42,000 people plus 7,000 um, slaves. So they have a total of 49,897 people that are going. And they also had 200 male and female singers. They had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 67,000, um, 6,720 6, donkeys. They have a whole host of people and things, animals, livestock, materials coming um, back to Jerusalem. This is an important historical event for God and the Jews. They are going home and their work on rebuilding the temple of God is going to take place. Um, so let's flip to um, Ezra 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 10. Um, we're going to find out what happens. So they get to Jerusalem and they're starting to build. And Things are a little different at this building site than any building site I've ever seen. So let's listen to what they are doing. Verse 10. Um, when the builders laid the foundation for the temple of the Lord, the priest in their vestments and with trumpets and the Levites with cymbals took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by King David of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, He is good. His love toward Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. So here they are. They are rebuilding the temple. They are laying the foundation, which is the um, bottom part. It's on what everything else is um, built on. They are building this, but the priests are busy praising God. I don't think... I've ever been to a work site where they're building something and a bunch of priests are there singing and worshiping. This is very remarkable. There is such joy and rejoicing and praising and singing in the hearts of the Jewish people who have now returned home and are beginning to rebuild the temple to their holy God. But their joy is not going to last very long. There are some people in Jerusalem who did not want the temple to be rebuilt. So listen as I read Ezra 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. Then the peoples around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. They bribed officials to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So the Bible is telling us that there are some people in Jerusalem who, who didn't want this to happen. So they discourage them. They prevent them from building the temple. Um, they, they try to stop them and they are actually successful. And the building stopped for many years. But God wasn't finished. Nothing can stop God's plans for good. He was still in control. And although it took 21 years, the temple was finally finished. In Ezra chapter 6, Verses 15 through 17, we'll find out a little bit about that. The temple was completed on the third day of the month Adar in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered a hundred bulls, 200 rams, 400 male lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, one for each of the tribes of Israel. God's people came together to worship, to celebrate the completion of the temple. It is a really happy time. They're worshiping and they're praising. The Jews had been in captive, been had been captive in Babylon for 70 years. God had promised that they would return to the land of Judah. But who could know how God would do it? God used the king of Persia, King Cyrus, to send the captives back to Judah. Not only did King Cyrus let them go home, he had riches given to them so they could rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Only God could change hearts and change history like that. What seems impossible to us is always possible for God. After 21 years, the temple was finished. It was finished around 515 BC. 
When it was finished, there was a great celebration like I just read about. The people gathered together with the priests. Sacrifices were made. Songs were sung and prayers were offered. The people celebrated the building of the house of God with joy. God had once again proven that he is faithful. God worked in the heart of King Cyrus to accomplish his will, but this shouldn't be a surprise to us. We've seen it before and God continues to do it. Um, Proverbs 21, one says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, like the rivers of water. He turns it wherever he wishes. This verse tells us that God turns the hearts of kings. That means God is, con God is in control of the leaders of nations, but it also means that God is in control of, of all men, all people, even us. Throughout the history of the world, we see God's hand working out all things to accomplish his, his will. When we talk about God being in control of all things, we are describing him as, as sovereign. Um, that is the attribute that means he is in charge of everything. God said something through his prophets and it happened. God moved kings to attack nations and it happened. Sometimes God moved kings to take people away and it happened. And in this lesson, we saw how God moved a king to let the Jews go back home and it happened. These are all things that happened because God wanted them to happen. This was a true during Bible history, and it's still true today. God is the same God. He never changes. He is still in control. He is sovereign over every detail of our lives, just as he was in control of all history. You know, when things seem out of control, we need to remember they aren't. God is in control. And we've had a lot of this lately. Everything that we've known has been just thrown out the window. You know, schools have been canceled. Church hasn't been meeting together for a few weeks. And we're back together now, which is great. But um, sports teams aren't playing like they, they normally do. And there's some uncertainty. But we need to trust that the truth that even when we don't feel like trusting it or we don't feel like there's a plan. God has one. We might feel sad. We might feel confused. We might feel hurt. We might feel lonely. We might feel forgotten or angry. It's, it's okay to feel all those things, but we need to learn to take them to God because we have to trust God more than our feelings. We need to trust him more than anything. And we have to trust that in the end, God is working things out exactly how he wants them to. Would you close with prayer with me? Dear God, we praise you that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We thank you that you are in control. We might not understand everything that's happening, but you are in control. Uh, I'm sure the Israelites didn't understand while they were being taken to Babylon, but you had a plan to restore them to Jerusalem. And God, we know you have a plan for each of us. Help us to trust in you during the time of waiting. Help us to remember that you're in control of all things. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for Bible School today. Um, take a picture of yourself using your Bible in the comments, and we will mail you a Fairmount share. I hope you have a wonderful week.